All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Smug Mug to sell more licenses and prints. I'm gonna use my own Smug Mug account in this example, so I can basically go through and show you exactly how I have my website set up. Now, there's a lot of ways you can configure Smug Mug, but I've optimized mine over the years to make more sales, and I'm gonna show you how to do the same. All right, so here's what my website currently look like. This is the homepage, and it's a feed of all the photos that I've uploaded online recently. So when I upload a photo to social media or stock sites, I also upload them to my own website. So I use our Photoloo website to do this, which allows me to upload the photo once, and then just automatically gets distributed to eight different sites. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but if you wanna see what that looks like, I'll put a link up here somewhere to a video that shows you exactly how that works. All right, so I have my homepage set up this way because I get a lot of traffic to my website from my social media accounts. So if you think about it, let's say someone sees a photo on Instagram or Facebook that they like and they wanna purchase a print or a license. All right, well, they're gonna go click and go to my Smug Mugs. Now, most likely, there's probably a photo that I've posted regularly. So in this case, my homepage, they're going to see it right away. There's the photo they wanted. They can click on it, click the buy button, and they can go through and purchase the license or a print, right? You know, good website design is about making it really easy for people to do what they want to do, especially if what they want to do is buy something. So that's what I've tried to do with my homepage. All right, next I have my portfolio, which has my best photos. Now, this is just a gallery that someone can go to if they're interested in seeing my best work. And it turns out this is the second most popular page on my site after my homepage. All right, next is all my photos organized by location. Now, on an older version of my website, I had all my photos organized by location and by subject. But over the years, looking at my stats, I found that people were really only using the search by location and not the search by subject. The the reason is I think most people, when they see my photos online, they may see a photo of, let's say, Quebec, and they think, you know, I don't like this photo, but I like the style. Let me see if this photographer has other photos of Quebec that I might be interested in buying. So that's when they navigate to when they get to my site. Whereas if someone's looking for a photo of, let's say, a forest, they'd probably just go to a microstock site because there'd be much more selection there. So that's why I think it happens that way. But again, what you'll need to do is try this out for the type of photography that you do, right? I think it's good to be able to think about how people might want to see your portfolio and see your portfolio organized, especially if you have a lot of photos, so they can quickly get to what they want to buy. Now the last two pages here are just the about me and the contact page, which they're just static pages without many photos on them. All right, next I have my email sign up. So anybody can go on my site, enter in their email address, and every time I upload a photo, they'll receive an email with that photo in it. Now you might think that most people won't want an email to follow you that way. They prefer to follow you on social media. And that is true. My social media following is way higher than my email list. I've only got about 200 people on the email list. But it's about quality, not quantity. A lot of the people on my email list have purchased photos from me before. So they know my photography and they might want to purchase from me in the future. So it's good that they're seeing my new work as it comes out. I've got editors of travel magazines on this list. Um, and I know they're looking at my email so they've purchased from the list. So I can see that from my stats. I also see like a lot of local designers signing up for the list. So people who need to purchase a lot of stock photos about the area, they're signing up. So although it's not a large list, I actually get a higher number of sales through this list than a lot of the other social media channels. Lastly, I have another page that isn't linked from my homepage that helps me get more sales when people find my site from Instagram. And I'll show you how to set that up as well. All right, now let's jump into the Smug Mug design page and I'll show you how I set all these things up. Now, there's three main sections that I'm going to go through and show you in this video. The Organize tab, the Customize, and then the Sell tab. I'm going to start with Organize and I'll work my way to the right. So the way that I have my photos organized is really simple. I've really set this up so it's really easy for me to manage. What I have is I've got one collection called Daily Photo Blog. And in here I put all my photos. Okay, so every photo that I upload to social media is in here. Every photo that I sell as stock is in here. I've got about 672 items right now. So this is where I store all those photos and I always upload them to this directory. This makes it really easy for me to manage my home page because basically it's a long feed of all my images. What I do with those images, I then go in and have them organized by location. So over here you can see on the left, I've got 
got a folder with my photos by location. And then in there, I have some folders for the places I've been a lot, like British Columbia. I live in British Columbia, so I've got tons of photos from around here. So I have galleries for all the different locations. Whereas somewhere like Ontario, Quebec, or Mexico, I have visited there and I have some photos from there, but not as many, so I've just got a gallery here. Now, the way that I've got this set up is when I post my photo to the Daily Photo Blog gallery, it automatically sorts them and puts them in here based on the keywords that I put in. So I actually need to set up another one here because I recently took a trip to Hawaii and I've got a number of Hawaii pictures uploaded. So I want to create a gallery for Hawaii. So if someone's searching for Hawaii stock photos, they may find my photos and want to purchase them. So I'm actually going to set that up right here in the demo. So what I'm going to do is go here and do photos by location and I'm going to create. Okay. So this time I'm going to create a gallery. I'm going to call it Hawaii. I'm going to add some keywords in the description. The way that Google works these days, I'm not sure how much that actually matters, but I still add them in. So, the United States. And then for the URL, what I like to do is I'm going to do Hawaii travel. So you can customize that for SEO reasons. Okay. Now what I have here, what I've done is I've set up some quick settings. So what you can do is you can get a folder or a gallery set up the way you like it. And then you can set up a quick setting to automatically apply those settings. So I have one here called standard location gallery and I'm going to set that and check it. And then it sets it to what I have all my other galleries. So I'll go through and show you what those are. The main change though, is that I show very large images. I'll show the original. So if someone has a massive 4K screen, I'll show them a 4K image. I am not too concerned with people stealing my photos. I think if they're going to steal my photos, they're not going to buy them. So it doesn't bother me and I don't try to stop that because I just don't think it's worth the while. I think it's much better to show people the great big photos and if they're going to buy them, then they'll see be able to see what they're getting. Okay. So I'm going to go through here. If you want to see how I've set this up, it's available to everybody in the public. I have everything searchable, uh, but I've got that set up as a site setting. Again, I don't have any of the photo protections on. Okay. I do allow people to share to um, the different social saddles or put comments, but I don't really get a lot of those. And every photo that I want to go into this particular gallery, it's always going to be sellable. So every photo you see on my site is purchasable um, and I've got it set up that way. So now what I'll do is go through and create this. Okay. So now that I've set it up, this has no photos in it. But now if I go to the settings, you're going to see a new option that you didn't do before and it's called smart rules. Now I love these rules. These, this is by far my favorite feature in SmugMug. What this allows me to do is go up and set the rules for when a photo should be entered into the collection. Now I keyword all my photos. I think keywords are so important when you want to sell your photos as stock. So I always put the location in every one of my keywords. I think most of my stock photo sales probably come from people searching for a location and having the keyword in there. So I know that all those photos are going to have the keyword of Hawaii in it. Okay. So all I need to do is say include my photos with the keyword of Hawaii. Now I'll refresh this and there they are. There's all the photos. Now I'm not going to include my password collected galleries. I don't have a lot of them in there, but on occasion I might upload a gallery for someone else and make it password protected. And if I do have that set up, then I don't want it to show up here. So I'll turn that off and I'm done. It's going to create this gallery with all the Hawaii photos. And even better than that, what it's going to do is if I now go today and upload a new photo from Hawaii and I still have some that I haven't uploaded yet, it's automatically going to get added to this collection. Okay. So if you set up anything in SmugMug, the thing that I would just so recommend setting up is organizing your photos automatically with the smart rules. It'll just save you so much time and so much effort in the organization portion of it. Now going back to the organize tab, the rest of my setup is pretty simple. Um, I do have my portfolio here. This is just my best photos. Now I typically will up update this manually as I take more photos and I want to reorganize it, but I only really do it once, once a year. So this is pretty static. I do have some other galleries here for specific URLs that got a lot of search traffic on my old website and I wanted them to keep getting indexed by Google so that's why I just put these here. 
Okay. So I've got one for British Columbia Travel Photos. That was a very popular directory on my old site before I moved over to SmugMug. That's my uh, old Squarespace site. Now I have another one here where it's called Souvenir Pixels Instagram. Now this is an interesting one. What I've done in this one is I've got a smart rule set up where every single time I upload a photo to my photo blog, it automatically puts it into this particular gallery. Now the thing with this gallery though is what I've done is I've given it a custom URL of IG. So if they go to souvenirpixels.com.ig, it'll send to this gallery. And I've set up the the gallery settings so that they're in the thumbnail. So if you go into appearance, the gallery style is thumbnails. So when you go in, when someone goes and clicks on this link, now I only use this link on Instagram. So when someone clicks on my profile on Instagram, they go to this specific page that has square crop photos that looks very similar to the Instagram page with all my photos in a very similar order. But in on my page they can go through and click on them and purchase the photo so this is how i basically kind of make sales from my instagram feed coming over and i think it's really nice just to have it the same sort of mobile friendly ui because most of the people that are coming from instagram are going to be on a mobile device that's why i set up a page specifically for this and then I just have some other miscellaneous pages and an about page. So that's how I've got my photos organized. Very simple, um, but again, very easy to manage, which is why I love SmugMug so much. Now going back to the main page, let's go take a look at the customize. So what I'm going to do here is I'll first, let's go take a look at the new site template. So the template that I'm using is called uh, Dina or Dina. It's this one over here. I personally like it because I like white templates or just bright templates. So I prefer the white background to the black background. But Smugma does have a lot of other options for the black background as well too if you prefer that. I wanted to get one that had the bar on the left hand side so it's always showing and have just a large section for my feed so that's why i chose this one but a lot of the other ones are the same and i have customized it a little bit so i basically saved my own i've called it you know june 2018 which is basically when i went through and set this up so you're wondering which template i'm using that's the one now the next thing i'm going to do is to go to content and design so a couple of cool things that i've done here as well so a lot of these are standard items like I've got my you know name up here again This is my photo blog thing So I've got the very large images right on my front page um, and that's that main collection that I have okay. I've got my different um, Sections down here on the side and then over here. We've got the received daily photo email So what this is and I'll just edit it here is this is just site this is just code that I took from MailChimp. So what I do is I use MailChimp to send out emails every time I upload a photo. And I've got MailChimp set up so that it happens automatically. So what happens is when you upload a photo to SmugMug, there's an RSS feed, which is just like an automatic feed that gets generated for the photo. And that can be easily imported into MailChimp to then send out an email. So when I upload a photo, automatically an email gets sent out to my list, which is just over 200 people, and they can receive those via email. And so this code here, I didn't have to write this, I just got this from MailChimp, it was a cut and paste and put it in here. So it allows me to have an email address associated to my site. So that's not something that is available out of the blocks with smug mug but i just use mailchimp for it and mailchimp as long as your list is under 2000 people it's actually free so i just have a free mailchimp version to send out my emails that's a cool little thing that's uh, set up there okay. another thing that i've done if i look at my folders here I didn't like the way the folders looked when I first logged in and I found this here where you basically have this kind of overlay. I didn't like the way the titles looked. So what I did was I went and found some code, CSS code, that somebody else created.
So I'm not going to take credit for this. This was created by Scott Hunter, and I'll put a link down below to where he posted this code on one of the SmugMug forums. And I basically just took this, modified it a bit, and used it. So I found this to look a lot nicer, a little bit prettier, so I used that. So that's another cool thing about SmugMug, is that you can go in, if you do know coding, you can go in the back end and actually do some customization. I didn't do a lot, because I didn't want to spend a lot of time setting this up, and I really liked the way most things look except for the galleries but that is something you can do another great thing is is that on the smug mug forums a lot of other people have made customizations to smug mug and they've uploaded the code for other people to use so you can just go there and literally cut and paste it in so there's a lot of resources like that a lot of great photographers use smug mug and a lot of good photographers are also designers so they have the skills to write this type of code and they're happy sharing that on the web so that's something that i've done to update to make my galleries look a bit uh, prettier now the rest of what i've done here is really just out of the box smug mug i took the template and used it for the most part as is and i like the way it looks i think it looks pretty good so i've left it that way now the next thing that i have here is the sell section so what i'm going to do here is go and take a look at my price list now most of the sales that i get from the site are for, for commercial licenses so let's look at those in a bit more detail so the way that I've got this set up is that for low res photos, less than one megapixel, I charge $12. So if someone wanted to purchase a photo just to upload to Facebook, it would cost them $12. For a larger photo, a four megapixel one, it's $100. So if someone wanted to do an online ad campaign and use the photo in a lot more places, they'd probably choose that one. And the original, which would typically only be purchased for print, is $200. Now, I did a little test a while ago before I was on SmugMug when I was on Squarespace. And what I did was I randomly chose half my photos and I set the price to $12. And I the other half of the photos, I set the price to $100. And I wanted to see which would be more effective in getting sales. And what I found after doing that for two years is that 50% of my sales came from the $12 photos and 50% came from the $100 photos. So it didn't seem to really matter what the price was. And I think that's because people find my photos on social media, they want to purchase that photo when they come to the site, and it doesn't matter to them the price as much. They just need that photo for a particular ad campaign or for a particular purchase and they just purchase it. Now, if they wanted to purchase to get a lower price, they would just be on Shutterstock and they'd be looking for the photos there. So I don't feel that I'm competing with Shutterstock. These are people that are looking for photos elsewhere, which is why that I can justify these prices. And although these are high compared to the stock sites, I don't think that I would make more money on my website if I lowered the prices. Now you can let me know what you think about that in the comments and let me know if you found differently. And that's it. That's how I have my set set up. Now, obviously I didn't go through the nitty gritty details of how to set up a smog mug site in this, but there's tons of different videos and much better videos by smog mug that can go through and tell you what all these different options are. But what I wanted you to get out of this video was just a good understanding of how I set up my site and why I've set it up this way for the particular types of sales and sales that I'm looking for. All right, so that's how I have everything set up on my website. If you use SmugMug and have any tips for how I can do things better, I would love to hear them in the comments. Also, as always, if you have any other questions about how this set up or how I did these different things, feel free to post the questions down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them as I can. If you found this useful at all, I'd really appreciate it if you would go down and uh, hit the like button. Just lets me know that making these videos is worthwhile. Also, this entire channel is about making money selling your photos online. So if that interests you, go down and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications. Best of luck selling your photos online.